Only 0.01 or less than 0.01% of the universe has sin. And God wants to make sure that it is 100% of the universe that has no sin at all. And he wants to keep it that way. But this poses the question that oftentimes, no matter where I have been in the world, no matter who I have preached to, no matter who I have gave Bible studies to, no matter who I have encountered, I have always heard this question being asked, why didn't God just destroy Satan and sin immediately when it existed? Have you ever asked, that, asked yourself that question? Why didn't God just destroy Satan and sin immediately? There is a reason why sin still exists. And the reason, the reason is because people still have questions. Many of God's creation has questions. Whether they're angels, unfallen worlds, or human beings, they have questions. If Satan was destroyed at the beginning, all of the angels and other beings would have doubted if God had chosen the best choice. For eternity, there would have been questions in their minds. Can you imagine? Think about it. Can you imagine being married to somebody for eternity who constantly doubts your love for them? Can you imagine being married to somebody like that that doubts your love? No matter what you do, they will always doubt your love. Can you imagine giving birth to children and having them doubt your love for them for eternity? God wants to avoid an eternity of that. So as long as there will be questions, Satan will still exist. Let me repeat that. As long as there are questions, Satan will still exist. But there's good news. In Revelation, we saw that the highest of angels the 24 elders are from, from the unfallen worlds assembled together to worship, but Satan is absent. And Satan, who is usually at those, at those gatherings, he is absent. Let us see why. If you have your Bibles, turn your Bibles with me to Revelation chapter 5. Last week, we went over Revelation chapter 4. This, 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 this message, we're going to go to Revelation chapter 5. Let us see why is it that Satan is absent. Revelation chapter 5, we're going to start in verse 1. Revelation 5 and starting with verse 1, it says this, And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals? And, it, it seals? and no one, how many? No one in heaven or on, on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. Verse 4, look at verse 4. So I wept much, he cried. John, John is, John is crying. So I wept much because no one, how many? No one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. Wow. Time will not allow me to, and I, I wish I had the time because that, that book right there, that scroll is so important. In that book contains... I'll show you uh, another time, maybe in, in a Friday night Bible study, probably I'll show you, I'll show you this. But um, in, the, in that book, it contains the whole great conflict between Christ and Satan. And it contains the whole history of redemption. All of history, from, with her earth and heaven, all of history, beginning from the, from the beginning all the way to the end, is in that book. Your life story is in that book. My life story is in that book. Don't you have questions to ask about to God? Isn't there a question that you have to ask to God about why certain things happen in your life? That you're, you, you don't know why, but you're, you're like, God, I need to know why is it that this, this specific thing happened in my life? It's in that book. Every question, every event, 
Everything in history is in that book. However, it is sealed. And in order for all questions to be answered, we need someone worthy to open it. But as John looked around, he looked around, he looked in heaven, he looked upon the earth, and he saw that there was no one that is found to be worthy. No one in heaven, no one on the earth. And of course, he would cry. If finding, somebody, if finding someone worthy, think about it, if finding someone worthy is what stands in the way for sin and Satan to be destroyed, you would cry too. You would cry too. You know, I, throughout my ministry, I've encountered many people who have suffered with anxiety. I have encountered many people who have suffered with depression. I have, I have encountered many people who have had suicidal thoughts. Many other people with mental health challenges. And oftentimes, they have these questions. Oftentimes, they are struggling with these different things. And they cannot find somebody to give them an answer. They cannot find somebody to take that, that thing that is causing them to always be in a state of anxiety, always being in a state of depression, always having those suicidal thoughts uh, going through their mind. They cannot find somebody to take it out. And it's very hard to, to find it. And so they struggle. They struggle. They struggle. I found many people like that. But here I am today, this Sabbath, to tell you that the chapter does not end there. The Bible does not stop there, and we can praise the Lord for it. Revelation chapter 5, let's continue on, on to it. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 5. After John started crying because he couldn't find nobody that is worthy, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 5, it says this, But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, who is that? Who is the lion of the tribe of Judah? Jesus. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. He has prevailed. Pay attention. Pay attention now. He has prevailed. Verse 6. And I look and behold. So after, after the angel said, behold, this is the lion of the tribe of Judah, he's prevailed to open it. Then John, he, it's like he put on an extra set of glasses or squinted, and he saw, he says, I looked and behold in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a what? A lamb as though it has been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Verse 7, then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him, who sat upon the throne. Pay attention to the detail of the condition of Jesus. The angel said the, that Jesus prevailed or conquered. But then, when you take a look at Jesus, he appears as a lamb as though he had been slain. What rough thing, tell me, what rough thing did Jesus experience and conquer? Where he was a lamb that was slain. What rough thing did he, did he experience? The cross. He experienced the cross. It is only, think about this. Now don't, whew, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm getting excited here. Think about this thing right here. It is only after Jesus had conquered on the cross that he became worthy. Think about that, what that means. For 4,000 years, from the time that sin existed, all the way, or at least let me just say, from the time that Adam and Eve fell, all the way to the cross was 4,000 years. And so that means for 4,000 years, the scroll had been sealed, with nobody found worthy to open it. For 4,000 years, there has been questions by all created beings. But finally, there is a lamb who was slain, but yet he conquered. And he alone will be found worthy to open 
to explain this whole great controversy and the whole plan of redemption. And then he alone will be worthy to bring everything to an end. Our scripture reading by our dear sister here, our scripture reading was found in John chapter 12, where Jesus reveals something amazing about the cross and why Satan is absent. In John chapter 12, verse 31 to 33, if you, you want to follow me there, John chapter 12, verse 31 to 33, Jesus mentions something ex amazing about the cross, about his death, that, that, what his death would accomplish. In John chapter 12, verse 31, Jesus says, Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world, which is Satan, will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all to myself. This he said, signifying by what death he would die. Jesus was revealing a couple of things that would occur as a result of the cross. As a result of the cross, Satan, which Jesus called the ruler of this world, would be cast out. No more would he be called the representative of this earth. No more would he constantly be accusing God's people day and night before the heavenly council. Why? Because Jesus had defeated him. As a result of the cross, Jesus is now the representative of humanity. That is why, do you know that Satan had, every time that the, the heavenly council was meeting together, Satan was present, as we saw last, last Sabbath? But because of the cross, Satan is now absent. And who has taken his place? Jesus has taken his place and now he is the one representing us. So as, the, as our representative, as our representative, Jesus is our advocate. This is why the Bible calls him our advocate. This is why the Bible calls him our intercessor. This is why the Bible calls him our high priest. He knows what it is like to live as a human. The Yahweh, Jehovah of the Old Testament, came down to this earth, this sin-infested earth, and lived among us as a human being. And he took back what Satan has stolen from Adam. And now Jesus is in heaven right now as our representative. Instead of misrepresenting us, instead of accusing us like Satan constantly did, Jesus is representing us the right way. He is there to help us. He is there to defend us. He is there to help, to, to, to save us. Amen? Amen. And number two, as a result of the cross, Jesus said, if I am lifted up, I will draw all to me. Everybody to me. This all is not just talking about everybody on earth. It's talking about all throughout the whole universe. He is drawing all through him through the cross. This is why the redemption is not just for us. Redemption is not just for us sinners. Redemption is for every created being that God had created. It is, it is for us as well as for them. Because not only for us we are benefiting from it. Not only will we be able to go to heaven if we accept God. Not only will we have our questions answered. But they will have their questions answered as well. Every question, every doubt that may have been on their mind will be answered. Everything will be moved away. Everything will be totally secure for them. When because Jesus died on the cross, Satan knew that his time is short. Satan knew that he doesn't have much time left. And if he got kicked out of the position that he had, that he stole from Adam, that means, and Jesus is now in that position, he knows that, oh, oh, I'm going to die pretty soon. I'm going to be destroyed pretty soon. And Jesus right now and all of the other people, all of the unfallen worlds that God had created, they're looking at this and they see that as their security. The cross is their security that Satan will never, ever come back. Satan will never, ever hurt, uh, uh, or hurt them. Satan will never, ever molest them or, or just, just uh, bother them. Satan will never ever do that because since Jesus had conquered. Amen? Amen. 
And so even with all of that, even those in heaven will be drawn even more closer to Jesus.